controversy was a constant companion for Hector Gray throughout his 30-year riding career. The highs of New Zealand jockey premierships and international success were tempered by several lengthy suspensions. Despite the problems and for all his clashes with officialdom, the enduring memory of Hector Gray will be that of a rare champion, a master horseman, an outstanding race tactician and a benchmark for excellence. Gray was a natural horseman, instincts inherited from his parents. His father initially objected to a jockey career, so Gray's first rides around Taranaki in 1902 were in secret. He quickly honed the skills which became a trademark throughout his career. Gray had an uncanny ability to get the best out of a horse, turning average performers into winners. Physical fitness and self-confidence were notable features, and few jockeys spend more time studying the opposition and track conditions. Brushes with New Zealand officials were common, and Gray was suspended for two years in the 1908-09 season for not allowing a horse to run on its merits. Gray went back to farm life, maintaining his fitness by milking cows. He returned three months into the 1910 season to pass his rivals with 64 wins. It was a pattern that was to repeat itself. More jockey premierships drew a lucrative invitation to Australia in 1914. It turned sour when Gray was disqualified for another two years for inconsistent running. His license was never renewed, so effectively it became a lifetime ban in Australia. Gray returned to race riding in the 1917-18 season and won the premiership again, the first of three in a row. He was regarded as the Iceman of his generation, renowned for cool race judgment and the ability to outfox jockeys on classier horses. It's in Gray's contests with Gloaming, a dual New Zealand and Australian Racing Hall of Fame inductee, that we can gauge the true indication of his skills. Gloaming established one of the great records in Australasian turf history with 57 wins from 67 starts. He was beaten in New Zealand just three times by Sassanoff, Desert Gold and Thespian and Gray was the winning jockey each time. Gray later expressed sadness for Gloaming as Thespian ended a sequence of 19 wins and a chance to break Desert Gold's Australasian record. The early 1920s saw Gray embark on an international odyssey. He rode in England, France and Belgium and continued the unique record he started in Australia, winning with the first ride in each country. Gray won more than a hundred races in that two-year stint and earned great respect in England where many rated him amongst the best jockeys in the world. 1925 brought the toughest blow for Gray, a life disqualification for corrupt practices. It was remitted three months into the 1929-30 season, with Gray in his mid-40s, an age when most jockeys would have been retired. Yet Gray returned to win the Premiership with 75 victories. The following season, Gray picked up his seventh Premiership by becoming the first New Zealand jockey to pass the century of wins. Gray kicked home 116 winners that season. By the time another suspension ended his career the following year, he had chalked up 921 winners in New Zealand. Among them were three New Zealand Cups and three Wellington Cups. No doubt he would have been the first New Zealand jockey to ride a thousand winners at home, if not for the lengthy suspensions and time riding overseas. Horses were Gray's life, and he turned his knowledge and skills into a training career in New Plymouth, and then later at Eagle Lodge in Tuckanini. There's no doubt that Hector Gray's racing life could best be described as colourful, Yet Gray's legacy for race fans is that of a champion jockey whose name became the measure for excellence, the greatest since Hector Gray. <laughs>